With the drop down button the user can select a single item from a list and this is what we want to build in this video. You have a list of data and then the user selects the data and therefore we have here this drop down button and inside of this drop down button we have many drop down menu items. To get started we add here a list of all the items, apple, banana, orange, other fruit and then we also add the current value which we want to have in our drop down menu and we set it to the first value of this list here so it's every time the apple at the beginning and now we want to build our drop down menu here inside of this method so first of all I want to build here this drop down button and it's every time here a string inside so this is our generics you can also put your other values inside like object but we go here really basic with a string and then you need to put here your value inside so this is every time our current selected item and this is basically in the first time here this uh, apple which we have put here inside and then we also need to add here the items and this is basically the list of items like this year so these are apple banana orange other fruit and these are what we want to put here inside so we go over all of our items so this is our items list with all the items in a string form and we want to create a widget out of these strings and therefore I use this map function and create here this drop down menu item and um, it's not a widget but it's like an item and for this drop down menu item you can also set here the generics and because we have set our object type here to string and here also to string we want also to put it here to string but if you want to change it, you can change here later to another object, but then you also need to change it here everywhere at the top, here at all the locations, and then you can also put the other data inside. And here we want to add a simple text and then put our item, which is our value of this list, inside. And we also set a style of this text, so we put it to bold and we set the font size. And now if I hot reload, it's not working yet. So we need to add also here another field like it is showing. We also need to add here this value field. And here inside comes also our item, which is a string format. And if we put it now here inside, you see that we already see here something. And now we can also add here an unchanged handler. And this is our handler, which will determine if something changed in our widget. And then we get here the new value which we have selected from the list. So we have here this whole list of data and the user can click here on any item. And then we go here inside and get the value which the user has selected. And we want to set this value which the user has selected to our current state. So we want to put it here inside. And then we replace here this item which is in the beginning this Apple item. And now if I hot reload you will see that we already have here this item list and we can change it here to the different fields and if we change here if we have some user interaction it's every time going here inside. Now you have also the option to change here this design of this drop down menu and therefore you simply can remove here for example this drop down underline and if I now hot reload you see that we have here an underline which is like really not much but it's like a small gray color and if you don't like it then you simply put every time this drop button height underline and then you have no underline anymore and maybe you want to change the design a little bit more because here we have for example a different style for our drop down menu we can set a border and so on and to do this we first of all go here to our scaffold and add a background color so that we can see the changes better and now we don't see our item here but it's already here and then we simply wrap our drop down button inside of a new widget so we put here a container around and here inside we can create a width for our drop down button so we want to increase the width a bit so we add here padding to the horizontal direction and also to the vertical direction and you can also add some decoration and here we want to make our button rounded and we also want to give it a color and now I can hot reload and you see the changes what I did so basically it is rounded a bit and this is because of this border radius circular and it is, has also some padding because we have here added some padding and you can also change it if you like so for example I want to increase the horizontal padding on left side and right side then I 
put here higher value inside and if I now hot reload you see that we have here more padding to the right and left side. You can also change it if you want to increase the padding to the top and bottom then you change here this to a higher value like 16 and then you see we have here a higher value. I will put them here back to the origin and now what we also can do is to set here a border for our drop down button and this is what we do here with the border property and now we don't see the border right now because of the color which I have set here but if I would remove it you see that we have here a black border around it and I will put here this background color black again inside so you don't see this border again but we can obviously change also the color of this border so I put it here to orange and then this border will also show with the black background so here you see the border and maybe this is not really much of the border so we can also change it here. I give it a higher width and then we have more border here inside. And if you want to show you more information inside of this drop down button, you can also quickly do this. So let's try this out. I put here, for example, row. And instead of the text, which is only showing here, we simply show also an icon. And then you put here an icon in front. So let's say we put right now every time the same icon. So we choose here one and then we hot reload it. And now you see we have here an icon next to it. And if you want to add some space, you can also do it. And then you see that we have here this icon and also the text. And also if I go here and open this, then you see that we have here this icon every time in front and this text. And basically uh, the idea would be that you every time have here then a different icon, maybe, maybe the fruit which you are showing or an image of this one. So you have here maybe an apple showing, a banana and whatever. And this is what you can customize here inside. So basically you don't need to put here every time a text inside. You can modify it like you want and put here all the widgets inside which you know already and then it is also working fine. And the last thing I want to mention is that you obviously need to change then also here the string data. So if we want to have for example a string and an icon then we create a new object and inside of this object we have then first of all the icon inside and also the string. So let's quickly demonstrate it. So let's say you have a new class and this is your new object which you want to put there inside. And then you have here basically a string which is our title. And then you can also set here the icon data. And this is our icon. And you also create a constructor. And now you can every time call here this new object and put your objects here inside. So you would replace here all of the strings and here also you change this new object and you need to change it like everywhere where you have a string you need to change it then to this new object. And now instead of a simple apple we need to put here now an object inside our object name um, and here we need to do it for all the items which we have. And now I have set here some random items inside for this uh, icon and now we simply can display them. So instead of this items we want to put here this new object inside and now we can access here this item property and call here for example the title for the text widget and for our icon widget we simply call here from our item this icon. And now if I hot restart you see that we have here different icons for every object which we have and this is basically what you can do. You can put here your individual data inside and therefore you create an object and then you put here all the data in your object inside which you need to display later here this widget. And then you access here basically every time over this item the property which you want to access. So for example title, icon or whatever other thing you want to put here inside. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye!